Leprechaun Pants Treat Bag, presented by Fabricadabra at LPL. Today we're going to be making these cute little treat bags that look like leprechaun's pants. Got the idea and the pattern from PositivelySplendid.com. These are some things that you're going to need to complete this project. You're going to need felt. Uh, you'll need a piece of black felt, some medium or dark green felt, and a lighter green felt. You, of course, you're going to need the pattern that you can find on PositivelySplendid.com. And finally, you're going to need scissors, pins and needles, sewing thread, embroidery floss, a marker, and a hot glue gun. Hey, let's get started. Okay, first we're going to cut two of the pant body from either the dark green or the light green. Don't cut from both. Next, you're going to cut four strap pieces from either the dark or light green. Then you're going to cut four shamrock leaves and two shamrock accent pieces from either the dark or light. Finally, you're going to cut two belt pieces from the black felt. Now, once you've cut out all your pieces, you're going to want to pin the, one of the belt pieces to one of the pieces of the pant body. And then you want to do the same for the other. Okay, next you're going to get out a sewing machine or hand sew the belt to the pant body. And as you can see, I started on the smaller piece, the smaller side of the piece. And this is what you do when you want to do one con continuous stitch all the way around. So I started the stitching with a back stitch. And then you go forward. And then you do another back stitch. And then you leave your needles stuck into the, um, into the fabric and you turn it. You know, you lift up your presser foot and you turn it. And that keeps it all aligned. Now you just want to keep sewing down that long piece. Uh, make sure not to sew over your sewing needles as that can damage your machine. And then when you get close to the end, but not right at the end, okay, you want to leave that piece in, leave that needle in, turn the piece, lift the presser foot, turn the piece, and then do a few stitches right here on this short end. Okay, when you get close to the end of that, you're going to do the same thing. Lift the presser foot, turn the piece, put the presser foot back down, and sew straight on that long edge until you come back to the beginning. And then you want to stop and make sure that you do a reverse stitch to lock the stitch in. and you want to do this for the other uh, pant body and belt piece. And there you go. Doesn't have to be perfect because those edges are not going to show when, we're our, when we have our finished product. Okay, now that we have those two sewed on, we're going to take our two pant body pieces with belt and we're going to put them facing together so you don't want to see the belt. You want them to be the, um, the front facing uh, each other in the middle. Okay, and you want to align those edges really nicely. Okay, and we're going to be sewing along those curves. And don't forget to pin that in place, just like I've done here. Okay, so again, I'm starting at uh, the belt side of that curve. And I did have trouble doing that because it's very thick. So you, um, later I'm going to show you a different way of, uh, of starting that. But, you know, you, again, you always start with a little bit of a reverse stitch. So you go a few stitches ahead, then you reverse stitch for a few stitches, and then you go straight through until you get to the end. So here we are, and I'm kind of curving it around that curve until I get close to the end. 
And then I'm going to do some re reverse stitches to lock that in. And then that's it. Alternatively, <laughs> this is the alternative I was talking about, you can start from the other edge um, end of the curve. So you see I'm not starting where the belt is, I'm starting uh, where basically the crotch will be. Um, okay, and it's the same thing. You know, put, put it in place, lower your presser foot, do a few stitches forward, do some reverse stitches, and then move forward again until you get to the end. When you're doing a curve, just go slowly um, so that you can maneuver the fabric around. Okay, I'm close to the edge. I did a few reverse stitches, and now that's the finished product of what the edge is like. You want to do that for both of those curves. Okay, so next, um, we have that part sewn together. So you're going to open it up, okay, just like I'm doing here, and then you're going to lay it flat um, with the seams meeting each other. And just like that. And you want to line it up really good so that all these different little corners and edges uh, meet up. And then I'm just going to pin that into place, kind of sped up the video in places throughout this um, when I'm doing something that doesn't really, you don't need to see it that well. Okay, and I'm going to put a third pin in the little, <laughs> what I call the crotch area of the pants. Um, <laughs> and that's just going to help um, keep the fabric aligned while we're sewing. Okay, so now we're going to sew, and it's just like with the other um, bit of sewing we did. You know, you're going to start out, and you're sewing this whole edge along where the crotch is and the legs. So we're sewing, and then when we get to this part, so it's a straight shot, and then there's a basically almost a 90-degree angle. So we're going to stop. Okay, when we get to about fourth of a quarter of an inch um, to the end, do a little, I did a little back uh, reverse stitch just to keep it in place. And then you're gonna leave your needle down inside the fabric, turn it, that 90 degree angle, and then sew straight again. And you're gonna go, it, it's not completely straight, it's a little bit curved, but I'm gonna show you a little trick, especially since right here it's really thick. So you see where I'm where I'm fooling with it, and I'm kind of trying to decide what I which way I'm gonna go. And I I actually end up deciding just to shove that whole area off to one side. Because you're not making pants for a person. You're making pants for a imaginary leprechaun. Okay, so I got into that middle part of the crotch, and I'm going to leave the needle in and uh, turn it, okay? And so that's a lot easier than trying to turn the fabric as you're sewing. So when you have sharper angles, um, you can do that. Remember, always pull your pins out as you're sewing before. Don't sew over your pins, um, as that can damage your machine. And actually, it could also damage a person. Uh, if a little piece of the needle flies off or any other metal flies off, it can hurt somebody. So here we go, coming up to the edge. And I'm sorry, it's hard to film this with my hands in the way all the time. <laughs> Try to move them as much as I can. Okay, did the reverse stitch, and now we are finished with this part. And there you go. Have it all stitched. That whole, both legs stitch all the way. Now this is a weird part. Uh, it's part of the instructions from Positively Splendid, but they want you to cut out squares at each of the little points of the leg on, on each side. So uh, that's what I'm trying to draw out here with this um, Sharpie. And uh, you don't have to draw it out. You could just eyeball it. Um, they said to measure it like five eighths of an inch, but I just decided to go ahead and 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 kind of do my own. Uh, <laughs> I actually ended up cutting slightly larger squares uh, because they worked better, but um, that's kind of up to you. So then you're going to cut out those little squares that you've just marked. 
Now that does um, kind of mess up the stitching that you did a little bit, but it's not gonna matter once we're done because we're gonna be stitching those areas closed and um, they're not likely to come out. So this is me just cutting out a little break right in there, cut and cutting out that final square. So there's gonna be four little squares that you cut out. And there is method to this madness, it's not just madness. So uh, you're gonna see that in a little bit. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do with these corners that I, that I cut out. <clears throat> you're going to push it in, and this is really hard to explain. Okay. So it's really hard to explain, but you're going to kind of push each side into each other. Okay, do you see what I'm doing here? And it's kind of like a little sandwich. Okay, and I'm pressing the seam open with my fingers and I'm holding it. And this is, can be hard to do on a sewing machine, so if you wanted to hand sew this part, it's perfectly fine to do. But I managed to do this on the sewing machine. I was very proud of myself. And so it's basically like sewing anything else, except that it's really thick. So just, you know, if you want to attempt this, just know that you have the backup of hand sewing if you would like. And don't forget to put in your two little uh, reverse stitches, a reverse stitch at the beginning and a reverse stitch at the end so that it locks those stitches in place. Okay, so there we go. Got one corner done, three more to go. And you can see again, I've kind of pinched it together in a weird way. Now this one has two sets of uh, seams, seam allowances that we have to deal with. So it, this one was actually a little bit harder. And those are the inside cuts that I made. Okay, and again, you are perfectly welcome to hand sew this part, but uh, if you can make it work on your machine, then that is also very good. Okay. And this is what's gonna look like if you when we turn it out completely. Uh, the leg is gonna look a bit like that. And, uh, and like that one. See, both my legs are now closed. That way um, it creates that bag. You know, you won't have your treats falling out at the bottom. All right, so next up we're gonna take our two, and this is super speeded, sorry, um, but it was, it, it was a little long. So anyway, we're gonna take our two um, uh, strap pieces, okay? Um, actually, are four. So you're going to take two of those strap pieces and put them together, and you're going to take the other two strap pieces and put them together. Uh, you can see here that I've actually pinned, put a, a couple of pins in there. And what we're going to do is sew these together just like we did between the belt and the um, pant body piece. So again, uh, this time I'm starting on the long edge with the sewing, it, it seems to work better, uh, for me anyway. So we started with uh, a, some, a few stitches, we did a reverse stitch, and now we're going just straight across, pulling any pins out as we go. Now I found as I did this, I ended up with a little bit extra of one of the felt pieces on the end, so I just clipped that off, you know. Um, definitely do that. In fact, you can make these, these straps a little bit shorter if you wanted. So you get close to the end and then you want to leave your needle in, lift up your presser foot, turn it about 90 degrees, sew that little bit, and yeah. So make sure your needle's in there, turn it, put down your presser foot, and sew that long edge again. And I, I'm fooling with it a lot because I found that it, it wanted to, uh, the felt wanted to move around a lot as I was sewing, so you don't have to. 
um, but I think I got a straighter piece because of it. And here we are, close to the edge. We're gonna do that, put the needle down through, lift up the presser foot, give it a pivot, and put the presser foot back down and finish sewing. And of course, when those two uh, sewed edges meet, you wanna do a little reverse stitch and it's locked in. And here you go. That's what it looks like. Okay, so now we're just going to attach the ends of the um, suspender straps to the pants with hot glue. Uh, I tried hand sewing it and it works, but there were some issues with it, so I suggest the hot glue instead. And so now you want to turn the whole project out. So grab it from the inside and pull it out so that now you have the, the finished look on the outside. And uh, just a little tip, uh, just to dress it up a little bit, you could actually make your straps with either um, have one side of it green and one side of it orange or one side of it green and one side of it yellow, just to kind of dress it up a little bit. Well, let's not forget the clover. We're gonna make a cute little clover to go onto our leprechaun pants. Uh, you're gonna want some embroidery floss. You're gonna thread it through an embroidery needle. Um, and what I do is I pick up one of the little uh, clover pieces and I fold it in half and then push that needle right through. But I don't pull it all the way through. My thread is not knotted. So I'm keeping all the little pieces, as you can see, on the needle itself. It's a long needle, most embroidery needles are longer. So if you have one that's longer, that's good. And as you can see, I'm just putting them and smushing them together. And then once you've got all four pieces on, you pull the thread only through about halfway because what we're gonna do is we're going to actually tie those two ends um, into a knot. So here I am, I wanna keep it real nice and tight. You want that knot to be pretty tight. Okay, so here I am, I'm making the first knot. I'm actually gonna make two knots to, to make it more stable. So I tied my first knot and then I'm going to tie it again while also continuing to keep those pieces kind of smooshed together. Okay, and here we go, nice and tight, and then you can just cut those edges off. Just like that. Okay, so now you can take your uh, petals, um, clover leaves, whatever you wanna call them, and, uh, and kind of zhuzh them into place, okay? Then we're going to take our two little um, accent pieces, make it look like ribbon, okay? And we're going to put those on there. Now you could do this with hot glue, but it's actually easier to do with hand sewing. So this time you do want a knot on the end of your embroidery thread, and you're actually going to attach those two little pieces, like I'm doing here, to the clover itself. So I'm gonna put it through, and you notice that those two clover leaves were trying to like separate from each other. So I'm actually putting it through both of them and that's to help keep them together. So pulling that through, and uh, sorry, went off camera there a second. I'm gonna get it back into focus here. Okay, and so then you just wanna put a few stitches in. I like to make it so that there's um, stitches that are going through each of the petals and the ribbon. So that's what I'm doing here, is I'm just kind of very carefully making small stitches because I want to get all the petals together and attached to that. And then you just make a little knot at the end of it uh, and pull it tight. Oh, and one more stitch, okay, put it through the hoop it tight and there you go here is the beautiful completed clover ribbon cut off that and here we go isn't it lovely 
I'm actually going to snip off some of it because I felt like that piece was a little too thick and a little too long. And then, of course, you can zhuzh it all you, all you want. Okay, so now we want to uh, attach our clover, our clover ribbon to the leprechaun pants. So I'm going to use hot glue for this. You could hand sew it. I found it was a little bit easier to use the hot glue. So put the hot glue onto the pants. Don't put it onto the clover. Put it onto the plants where you might want to, onto the pants where you might want to hide something or just up in the corner like that. Okay, peel off your little thread and then, then push down the clover onto it. And that's going to keep you from getting burned. If you put hot glue on the back of that clover and then your finger slips when you're going to put it on that, on the pants, uh, yeah, that's not fun. Uh-uh, <laughs> that's how I burn myself. And we are finished, yay! So here is the finished product. Thank you for joining me and happy sewing.